ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي All praises due to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom we worship to whom we ask for forgiveness and we ask help May Allah's peace mercy and blessing be on the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and his companions and all those who follow his sunnah until the last day Another blessed month of Ramadan is approaching us when we all all of us wait eagerly for the month however we also indulge and engage into some controversies before the month and while it is going on one of the major controversies controversy and major conflict and i should say differences of opinion occurs regarding to the moon sighting and the ummah seems to be divided in the issue this issue has been differed upon for 40, more than 1400 years ever since the sahabas were there the issue had attracted different op- different opinions and if we analyze there are three major types of difference one group they say that to start a month of ramadan or be it the month of shawal the sighting of the moon is an essential what that means is they claim that you have to see the moon to start your fast i.e. the month of ramadan and to end it and they have evidences of that another group they say that if one moon is visible throughout the world then it's upon all the muslims to start ramadan or eid on the basis of that so what effectively they're saying that you have to observe the ramadan or the idul fitr on the same sighting of the moon wherever in the world it has been seen and they have got evidences and funny enough both of the groups have the same evidences the verse of surah baqara 189 and the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which comes in bukhari and muslim there is another group they have taken another approach that they will start their ramadan or shawal according to the time when they start in makkah or madina so this is the third opinion and they have got uh, some evidences too now throughout the history of islam the scholars has differed but they have been agreed on something 
they have they have agreed on that that the differences in rising of the moon is there so they have been united on the differences of moon rising times it's called ikhtilaful mataala that means the moon rises in different times so they are totally united on that issue however they differed if that differences in the time of moon has any bearing in the issue or not it seems uh, a little bit complicated however um, it's only theoretical it's not for example imam shafi and some other scholars they had the opinion that since the time of the moon rising it varies when it's in uh, uh, in united states america when it rises that doesn't really match with the time maybe in asia so the the differences of time in rising the moon has an effect how we should start ramadan or not so his opinion and the other scholars opinion around him was that it has to be local sighting so you have to see the moon and then you start the month if you do not see then you complete 30 the basis of it is the hadith mentioned in bukhari and muslim that when you see the moon start fasting start fast when you see the moon and stop fasting when you see the moon and if you cannot see the moon because it's cloudy then complete 30 days in another narration it says complete the numbers which means the counting where other scholars like imam abu hanifa imam ahmad ibn hanbal imam malik and some uh, some of imam uh, some of the students of imam malik they had the opinion that one rising of the moon would be sufficient for the whole world there are more number of scholars in this um, side however if we analyze and if the, when the scholars went into in deep in details they found out that the previous one the local sighting is the stronger evidence option number 3 where some people start their ramadan on the basis of makkah and madina this is the weakest of all the opinions that is the weakest so the scholars do not you know endorse this however in extreme circumstances like in norway or sweden or wherever it is sometimes necessary then it is permissible to do so but the other two since they have used the same quranic verse and the same hadith as an evidence so this is called a legitimate difference so the difference in this opinion is a leg- legitimate difference and it then becomes to the authority to accept one of them now ideally the scholars according to the um, proofs and everything they found out that local sighting is the best option i w- will not go into too much details in this but uh, one um, each will inshallah explain that the main main argument of the people who wanted to observe one day for the whole ummah that means one sighting anywhere in the world their major evidence on the basis of that hadith they said that when it says fast when you see the moon this is general so it actually applies for throughout the world all the muslims because it didn't say for a locality but on the contrary if you look at other orders like when you break the fast you do the iftar order is when uh, the darkness comes then you break your fast now it also doesn't specify any any certain group and certain locality so that also applies to general so that doesn't really mean that when in bangladesh someone uh, at, uh, when they have got 5:30 they see the darkness and they start iftar some on the other side of the world they should do the iftar even though it's known it's not like that so that argument is not strong there are people they will try to defend it saying that 
one is sun based one is moon based but it is not also a valid argument because both has differences of rising rising so that ag argument doesn't exist and on the support of local sighting there is another hadith of abdullah ibn abbas uh, of, of Quraiba narrated about Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. So Quraiba was in Syria, in Damascus, he went, and then Muabiya was the governor there. And they saw the moon of Ramadan on Friday. So after finishing work, when Quraiba radiallahu anhu came back to Medina, and he asked Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, that what day did you uh, see the moon? Then Abdullah ibn Abbas said that we saw the moon on Saturday, so one day, one day later. Then Quraybar said that Muabiyah himself saw the moon on Friday and we observed it on Friday. Then Abdullah ibn Abbas said that oh no, we will stick what we have seen because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has advised us doing so. So that, that actually is an evidence that if someone observes in one day and start the month on the basis of that, on the other side of the world or where uh, that uh, is too far, it is acceptable to have it on a separate day. And if you look into the history, Muslims always had different days for Ramadan or Eid in different parts and that didn't really harm their unity at all. So some people will try to argue that Abdullah ibn Abbas this hadith that is his own opinion which is not because he mentioned Rasulullah's name so it's a marfu hadith according to usul hadith this order goes to the order of marfu which can be related to Rasulullah however our intention here is not to push one over another at this point because at the scholar as the scholars has clarified it that both of them has the same dalil hence it is a legitimate difference and whoever is the authority in the Islamic countries there there be legitimate Islamic um, rulers or legitimate Islamic bodies or Islamic foundations it would be whatever they decide whichever method they use people needs to follow them the problem arises outside these sort of countries like non-muslim countries like uh, America, North America, Australia, and these sort of countries where there is no Islamic government. And then there is no Islamic body that can issue things and everyone is bound to follow that. There is, uh, the situation is not like that. So the scholars said that in this sort of circumstances, if you have a Muslim associations or something that actually can work and take place of the authority. So if you have a state or an area and they have got a legitimate Islamic body such as a few Imams get together, form an Imam council or form a moon sighting committee for that certain area, then their decisions should be followed. Some people, however, they think that if they have made a right, wrong decision, say for example, they, the Imam Council didn't go through a, these processes, they have taken up a date and said that this is the starting date. So it's a sunnah, we are not going to follow that. I have, seen, I have not seen the moon, I am not going to fast. People have come into this sort of experiences before. What does the scholar say about it? The scholars mentioned Another hadith, the hadith is found in Tirmidhi, Abu Dawud ibn Majah, and this hadith has been authenticated. It's a Sahih hadith. It says that fasting, Ramadan starts on fasting. So fasting is the day when everyone starts fasting. Id al-Fitr is on the day that everyone break the fast, which means the Id al-Fitr. And Qurban is on the day, sacrifice, when everyone does the Qurban. So what it means is, in this regard, you have to go through, you have to go with the authority, the majority, when everyone does it. And on, on the basis of that, scholars say that it is not permissible for anyone 
to go against the decision of the authority. In this regard, uh, they issued two also two different fatwas. One of them is there was they were asked that if I myself go there and saw the moon of Ramadan or Shawal and I notified the authority, but the authority didn't take my word. The reason maybe they wanted they from a different mazhab who required two witnesses or they might have not you know uh, recognized me as a you know true person whatever they didn't take my word so they decided that the moon has not been seen so they didn't start fasting from that day it will be the next day so what in this case i can do the scholar said that even though you are 100 percent sure that you saw the moon still in these circumstances you have to refrain from or your individual decision rather you go with the authority's decision and since you have missed one after the Eid you make the day you fast the day as a qadha so that clearly says that even you are 100% sure that you saw the moon I have seen the moon in my own eyes but the authority decided against me in still in these sort of circumstances you have to follow the authority so that is the basic principle and in terms of not following the authority decision what will happen is there will be breakage within the ummah so which is no way is acceptable barakallahu li wa lakum fi qur'anil azim wa nafani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al ayati wa zikril hakim aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sayri al muslimina wal muslimat fastaghfiruhu innahu ghafurur barur rahim Alhamdulillah, as-salatu as-salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin Another controversy is regarding during the Ramadan about the Taravi people are divided how many rakas we should pray 8 or 20 and then some some communities they fight with each other on the basis of that even here there are two two groups one group says that you have to pray eight because Rasulullah some prayed eight any more than that or you, you pray if you pray 20 it's not valid it will be with ah another group says that we have prayed 20 raka for a long time and it is the number you cannot make any less so it has to be 20 if you pray 8 it's not valid unfortunately both these groups are in the extremes if we go through the evidences what we will see that yes Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did pray 8 plus 3 from the authentic hadith from Bukhari and from other hadith and some people will try to argue that uh, these are uh, not Tarabi because it's not didn't say Tarabi. However, Tarabi, the name was given by the Sahabas later on, that didn't really change the Salah. So it's a uh, discussion of, for the scholars, and the scholars unanimously agreed that this is Tarabi or Tahajjud or Qiyamulail, all the same. So Rasulullah Sallallahu prayed eight, and there is no authentic, no authentic evidence, no authentic Hadith. It's not me saying, it's the Muhaddisin has said that there is no authentic hadith proven that Rasulullah ever prayed 20. However, there are other hadiths from Rasulullah when he said Salatul Laila Masna Masna. When he was asked the, by the Sahabis how to pray the night prayer, Rasulullah said night prayers are two by two. So two by two. And when you fear, the it will be fajr then pray one as a wither so that will make it huh, odd odd numbers now from that hadith it clearly says that it is permissible
for you to pray 2 by 2 by 2 by 2. So if you pray 2, that is acceptable. If you pray 4, acceptable. 8, 12, 16, 20, all are acceptable under this certain hadith. So if someone says that you have to pray 8, that would be wrong. Because if you pray 8, that is Rasulullah's sunnah. However, down the line, after um, Umar Anu's time, in the mosque, there was a practice of praying more. 20. Imam, Imam Malik narrated that in Medina, they used to pray 36 plus 3, so 39 altogether. So these are all practices among the Sahabas, and nobody objected to that. So that means that it is also permissible. So now someone come and say that you cannot pray this or you cannot pray this, that would be wrong. And to make it even, um, even, even more realistic, I'll uh, uh, tell you what is the reason in increasing the Salah. Uh, it was uh, narrated in Ibn Taymiyyah's book, uh, the reason why they increased at some times. During the Prophet time, he used to pray eight, but uh, he made them so long, very long, it was nearly dawn. Now after his death, when the Sahabas and the others used to stand, they didn't want to reduce it. So they didn't want to pray six or four and go because Rasulullah Sallam did eight. So they wanted to do at least eight. But it was hard for them. Some, some would be uh, old people, some would be uh, very young. Uh, standing for a long time would be hurtful for them. So uh, they decided to increase the numbers and shorten the qiyam time so that it, it would be easier for people whoever wants they can pray eight they, they can live or 12 or 20 whatever so that was the basic reason behind increasing and since it was under the permissibility of two by two it was acceptable so we really should not argue about this at all because both are accepted not only both all the options are accepted because Rasulullah has given the authority by saying the night prayer is two by two. Hope that inshallah we will um, be united in these matters and we will respect every legitimate differences and respect each other's uh, opinions and do not in, engage into too much expressism. May Allah help us in these matters. Inna Allah wa malaika tahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuhaladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma sur muslimin wa fi Filistin wa fi Iraq wa fi Afghanistan wa fi Burma wa fi Kashmir wa fi Misr wa fi Bangladesh wa fi Nigeria wa fi kulli makan Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab an-nar Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata ayun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama Rabbana kfir lana wa li walidina wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumul hisab ibadallah Inna Allah ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanhaw 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi ya'izukum la'allakum tazakkarun fazkuruni azkurkum washkuru li wa la takfurun aqimus salah